Holman. Good day, sir. Welcome back to Berg Vivant. We had a marvelous time last night at the James Gallery, the opening of Obscure Reveal. Um, I mean, fantastic show. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic. Ten artists are Karen Friedman, Christine Aaron, Tracy Adams, Stephanie Armbruster, Amber George, Lorraine Glessner, Jane Guthridge, Catherine Nash, James Nesbitt, Paula Rowland. I mean, an, an incredible... Uh, menu of, of artists there and the the show I mean so well attended I mean there was a lot of great energy to this mm -hmm. um, you know and I'm just going through the photos here taking a look uh, they had a live piano player very classy I mean very very well done and the great thing about this too was that we had so many of our Berg Vivant contributors there I mean here's you and Lonnie the theater lady <laughs> uh, we had you and we had Mike Bazzelli there <laughs> enjoying the hors d'oeuvre and by the way <laughs> the hors d'oeuvre were incredible they were, they were, and they had cake pops. That was the hit. Cake, the pops, cake pops were that. That was actually my first time at the James Gallery. I've never, I've never been. I've been. I don't really explore the West End a whole lot, but it was, it was a beautiful space, and it was laid out very well with all the different exhibits and uh, all the different artist pieces there, and it was. Oh yeah, James Gallery is, is the gem of the West End. And look, you chatting up the ladies there, Mr. Coleman. Oh uh, yes, the ladies. <laughs> Good friend of mine and a friend of hers. Oh yeah, they were wonderful chatting with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a nice time. Then there's Buzz and uh, Lonnie, the theater lady, uh, and enjoying some artwork. And the thing that we need to say about this exhibit, the common thread that tied everything together, is that these works of art, all of them, were created by painting with wax. Yeah, process encaustic, I believe, is what it was called, and. All of the elements, or rather, all of the pieces had that one common thread that, in some way or another, you know, wax melted or some fashion were used in every every piece. And it was, in some ways, very creatively done that you wouldn't know if you hadn't known that. Right. But um, it was very impressive. But that, it gave it, and the, the title of the show, aptly, is Obscure Reveal. And I think that that's exactly what the wax element in these pieces did. And by the way... Um, of these ten artists, which are from all around the country, five were there, um, which which was amazing, and we did have a chance to talk to uh, some of them. Uh, now, this this was Karen Friedman, and I think her work were probably the most colorful. They were absolutely uh, of the evening, and um, I mean they really pop. And uh, actually, Mike Bazzelli commented on these. He said that they reminded him of the opening credits to Anti Mame. Uh, Lorraine Glessner. Uh, who uh, we see here with uh, my favorite piece of hers, which, uh, w if I am correct, Cranberry Moon. And uh, she actually uh, commented that this was her favorite as oh, well. Great. And this one almost kind of reminded me, it, it kind of it kind of called to mind some Japanese mm -hmm. art. You know how they have the, the, cher the Japanese cherry blossoms? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit like that, but I mean, stunning. And... Um, James Nesbitt, uh, who was there, we chatted with him a little bit, and he had these series of six, almost like uh, portraiture. These these kind of reminded me of like Da Vinci sketches a little bit, and these were smaller scale. Uh, but the way that he used the wax, I think he applied it a little heavier mm -hmm. than the rest of them. And uh, I think it was you that commented; it almost looks like marble, and these look really like did. chunks of marble. Yeah. Well, he had, did some really neat kind of typography within the pieces as well, where there were. Um, Essentially, pieces of text with words blocked out of it to kind of make a, a smaller statement within there. Mm -hmm. And at least a few of them had that, which were adding a nice little element to it. <laughs> Who did you say that, that one? Well, looked... I thought there was one that looked like our friend Leon Zions. <laughs> but um, I don't think Leon was the, the model for, for any of these. Oh, this is Catherine Nash. Now, uh, Catherine herself was not present. But this, I am a big fan of pieces like this that are appear to be sort of semi-functional mm -hmm. sculpture mm -hmm. and this one in particular was called uh, Eclipse Lunar uh, and really has a lot of depth and dimension to it I love stuff like this it has almost a nautical feel to it where the, with the compass yeah. and when I think back to I don't remember what they were called like the, the, the shoebox diorama type deal yeah it had kind of that vibe where you look kind of within it and there's a story within there as well as almost like that chalkboard drawing 
sketch out on the yeah. very top. Pieces like this draw you in. They almost invite you to participate. Um, and me, I'm a texture freak, so mm. I got to touch everything. I did. I was respectful, and I did not touch. There was this. actually a sign that said "Do not touch." Right, and I obeyed. I did. <laughs> uh, Christine Aaron. We had a great time chatting with Christine. Um, she's uh, based in Larchmont, New York, and I think. Uh, that her pieces were among your favorites uh, of the evening. Um, and created by, I guess, oxidation and rust. Absolutely. And she said it was kind of a mixture of photography and lithographic type processes with, um, again, photos that she had taken and then also letters that were written by her mother. That's correct. That were incorporated in them. So actually her mother's handwriting incorporated into the pieces and photos printed in negative and then where essentially where the the ink wasn't sticking basically or the toner or whatever um it kind of repelled the oxidation oxidation that they were kind of putting in place where it was like a mix of bleach and wow. a few other things where it... and you gotta figure how does she come up with this i mean it's i mean a creative art but so much of it when it comes to art on this scale is chemistry absolutely you know, i think now a stephanie arm brewster um, I had I had a, a great time uh, speaking with her. She was very popular, uh, so <laughs> it kind of took a while for me to get around to her. But she had a lot of fans there that night. And Stephanie is uh, based here in Pittsburgh, which is uh, which is really fantastic. And this particular piece that she's posing with, I love the title, Gargoyles of Frick Park. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I've uh, had lunch with some of them, right. but uh, the the blue really stands out. Um, and this, as you can see by the scale of it, another large piece. But, Hard uh, to miss. And yeah. that's one big thing I will I will say just about the the exhibit as a whole. D the layout and the flow of everything. Oh, everything yeah. was extremely well lit and really showcased all the pieces very and it well. Compl everybody complimented each other very nicely, mm -hmm. I thought. you know. But uh, she did mention this is one of her uh, latest works and uh, was certainly getting a lot of attention uh, that evening. Now, this... Uh, this was not necessarily part of the obscure reveal exhibit, but Mike Bazzelli was really impressed with this room. Um, these uh, pieces, um, these, in the, they look like photographs, but they're actually acrylic on canvas of the Bridges of Pittsburgh, and these are by Roland Kula, um, and they are acrylic on canvas. I, I, I had assumed that they were photos when I, when I was looking at them. It was at, a very impressive, and it was kind of a, if, you're, if you go to the, the gallery make sure you kind of sneak back around there because yeah. i at first i thought that that was just kind of it the room we're in with the um with the obscure reveal section i thought that was kind of the end of the the gallery mm -hmm. but you kind of sneak your way back through there and it's this whole separate room uh now here's me and uh james frederick of course james is the james behind james gallery actually james was uh our very first interview oh. on, on berg vivant and the piece behind us um was another one of my favorites. Now this is uh, by Amber George, who's out of Bonita, California. Um, I love the colors in this. And if I have the title right, this was called Bits and Pieces One. Um, and an another one done with wax. The, the blend of the color in this, I love the blue and the tan and the gold. And as we were looking at it, the, the side to the uh, left, almost looked like a, a Rorschach uh, mm -hmm. test. We found, we found some geometry mm -hmm. uh, to that. And, and the one that pointed that out um, was actually Timothy Powers, the architect. And we're, we're here in this photo uh, actually looking at that piece. But as you can see, I mean, everybody there uh, was just having a great time. But even just to go down and just uh, uh, absorb these pieces in, in, in person. Well, they're all so it. unique, too, and that's the thing. They're... There's a little bit, of, a little bit of something for everyone within there, oh, yeah. and ample parking. Yes, that's ample very parking. important too. Yeah. I mean, imagine how many candles could be made out of all this. <laughs> right. It's really incredible. Which you know, I understand. Only a gay man would understand that. Yeah, but yeah. it's a kaleidoscope thing. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Now this, this, what was this? 